Hello, I'm Hannah Kaplan, and this is the WCS Wild Audio Podcast, where you'll find reported audio stories covering the latest news and newsmakers from the Wildlife Conservation Society's Global Conservation Program, Zoos and Aquarium, and their many partners. We've got a great show today, so let's get to it. While shark incidents with people are statistically very rare, each event understandably creates fear among beachgoers contemplating a swim in the ocean. Nothing has influenced the public's attitude toward sharks more than the 1975 film Jaws. WCS Life Trustee Allison Mare Stern was a model for the swimmer in the film's famously provocative marketing campaign. WCS Wild Audio's Nat Moss recently caught up with her to ask about that historic modeling job half a century ago and how it affected her life since. It's perhaps the most iconic movie poster in cinema history. You know the one. A woman swims naked and vulnerable at the surface of the ocean. Rising up below her from the ocean depths looms a great white shark, its mouth open wide to reveal multiple rows of sharp white teeth ready for attack. One hour, 35 bucks. That was my rate. It was the summer of 1974, and Allison Stern had just arrived in New York from Ohio for a job with a Wilhelmina modeling agency. Wilhelmina had just started her agency a couple of years prior to that, and it had grown already as a competition to Eileen Ford's Ford Model Management. Allison found her way in at the right time. You know, it's a tough business, okay, especially if you don't have connections. I had a great agent. I knew about Wilhelmina because I'd read about her in magazines, and she was a superwoman. Allison describes how the Jaws gig came about. I got a job out of the blue. They requested me for some reason. So I already had it. I didn't have to compete with anybody. So that was great. And uh, since it was one of my first, first jobs, you know, that was, yay, I'll take that. She would be posing for the cover to the paperback edition of the best-selling book by Peter Benchley, which was due for release soon. So I went to the studio. It was down on um, 4th Avenue. It's just a little short, like three blocks maybe of a street. And the photographer had a studio there. I lay on a couple of stools, actually, and simulated swimming. They took photos. And then Roger, Roger Castell is the artist. He was there in the studio and kind of directing, swim faster, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Look out, shark. (laughs) So anyway, that's how it was done. Needless to say, Allison had no idea this job would grow into something so huge. That was for the book cover, and then the book cover became the poster for the movie and the billboard and the T-shirts and everything else. It kind of grew from there. Allison was not involved in the shooting of the film by Steven Spielberg, but she and her husband Leonard had an opportunity a decade later to meet Spielberg at his studio office in connection with their involvement in the Shoah Foundation, dedicated to capturing the stories of survivors of the Jewish Holocaust. He was perfectly lovely, wonderful, nice, really nice guy. He autographed a uh, poster for me. Allison says Spielberg recalled the filming of Jaws as very difficult. It was a hard shoot. (laughs) It was a hard shoot. I think the shark would break down. They'd have to fix it, and, you know, it was a, a hard shoot. The complications associated with the malfunction of the giant mechanical shark have become part of the lore of the film. When I asked Allison if she'd had any experience with real sharks in her own life, she recalls a trip to Guana Island in the British Virgin Islands. I was swimming with my brother and nephew, snorkeling actually, and there were a billion little bait fish in in the water. And all of a sudden I realized I'm like swimming in a cloud. And I said to myself, you know, I really shouldn't be swimming in the food chain. That's not a good plan. And as I kicked my flipper, all the fish parted And I was eyeball to eyeball with this huge shark. And he was lying in the water. We looked at each other and we both went like that. He brought his tail to his nose and shot over my shoulder when he brought it back. That was really eye-opening. If Allison's connection to Jaws was happenstance, her awe and respect for wildlife is anything but. As her modeling career was winding down, she connected with the Wildlife Conservation Society via an invitation to see some pandas from China. She met WCS's late director, Bill Conway, who encouraged her to become a zoo guide. I went to zoo school at Central Park Zoo. I think it was about six weeks on Saturdays. And uh, I, I did that for a couple years at Central Park Zoo. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. As a teenager in the 1960s, 
Allison had been deeply inspired by the book The Year of the Gorilla, in which the venerable WCS field biologist George Schaller described his detailed observations of mountain gorillas. Schaller would go on to conduct seminal research on lions, jaguars, tigers, pandas, and snow leopards, among other species. For Allison, finally meeting him was a thrill. When I met George Schaller the first time at the zoo, I was ready to faint. I just was like, wow, this is like a hero. <laughs> the most amazing conservationist. And it was a pleasure being able to see him occasionally at the zoo. Anybody can give his reports from wherever he was coming back from that time. Quite a guy. Today, the Central Park Zoo's snow leopard habitat is named for Allison. It's a species she adores, but she says she feels that way about all cats. I never met a cat I didn't like. I grew up in the house with my father's mother and my dad. My grandmother hated cats, <laughs> but, so and they wouldn't let me have one in the house. My dad had grown up on a farm, and he said they should be outside, and whatever. And I remember I went one day, I probably was about 9 or 10, throughout the whole neighborhood, and I took every cat, and I brought them one by one into our house, and I had them all in my bedroom. And my grandmother went up there and opened the door and almost had a heart attack. There were probably 15 cats in there, you know? It was really funny. Before we finished, I wanted to know how Allison's involvement with JAWS continues to affect her life today. Every year around this time, people start worrying about sharks. So then, of course, my poster is popping up all over the place and people are talking about it. And whenever they talk about sharks, they have this image of the poster. And there I am swimming and swimming. But people think it's kind of cool when they know that that's me. I'll tell you something funny. When my grandson went to college, he had a poster of Jaws in his apartment. I said, Simon, they're going to think you're twisted. I mean, you're the kid with your grandmother on your wall. I ask Allison if a fear of sharks should dissuade us from going in the water. She counsels respect for carnivores, but also to remember that people are not on their intended menu. You should always be cautious when you're in the water. If there's some apex predator there. You, you have to be careful, but basically they're not there for you. They're there for a seal or whatever their food source is. Then, with a wink, she circles back to her modeling career where it all began. Don't dress like a seal. That would be my fashion advice there. <laughs> WCS has a 10-year global strategy to protect sharks and rays. Among the most threatened species, these cartilaginous fish play a critical role in maintaining a healthy ocean environment. For more information about WCS's work with sharks and rays, visit our website at www.wcs.org. I'm Nat Moss for WCS Wild Audio. Today's episode was produced and recorded by Nat Moss with help from Hannah Kaplan and Dan Rosen. The WCS Wild Audio Podcast is a production of the Wildlife Conservation Society. Please join us next week for a new episode and don't forget to rate or review the show wherever you get your podcasts.